Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. Um, so today we are very, very lucky that we get to have the opportunity to speak with Lisa. So Lisa, I am terrible at doing introductions for people. So I'm just going to let you introduce yourself um, tell people who you are, a little bit about you um, and why it is, um, well, personally, I think you're absolutely amazing and fascinating um, and just share yeah. some of your, some of your life with us. Sure. Um, so I'm Lisa Johnson. I'm a mum of twins. I'm somebody that loves to travel and I help people make more money online from things like memberships courses or anything else that's semi-passive. Um, I've been doing it for, we just hit seven years, um, wow. which seems crazy that it's been seven years already. Um, and yeah, it's been a roller coaster of a ride over the last seven years. I'm very fortunate to have made 16 million in that time. You can imagine the kind of issues that come with that mindset and strategic. Um, but I'm really enjoying it. And um, we help around 5,000 people a year um, in the business. So, yeah, we've had some great successes. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Um one thing that I would like to pick your brains on, and I'm sure people listening will find it interesting, is often we talk about like when businesses grow, they kind of hit this this stage of um, investing in their growth without seeing the return. Did you kind of have that same thing? How long did that last? How did you ride through it? Because um, that can actually kill a lot of businesses if they don't yeah. navigate that effectively. So how do you kind of, or how did you, because you kind of, I'm assuming now kind of got to the other end. Um, yeah, how did you kind of navigate that? Yeah, I think that you have that many times in business. I don't think it just happens once. So I remember like at the beginning, right at the start, that's the first time that you're having to invest without really seeing results. And um, I was investing time because I was £30,000 in debt when I started. So I didn't have any money to invest. And I had toddler twins that were taking up wow. so much of my time. And so the thing that I had to do was just invest any time I could into learning so that I knew how to do things. And, you know, every time I came to an obstacle, I'd have to figure out a way to get past it by learning. Um, and then I think around the kind of a million mark, a million a year, we plateaued. So we were like trying to do all the things to get it growing again, to get it moving again. And it, it took a bit of time. And it was because I had one particular business model, which was one to one in the first year. And that was great. The first year made me kind of 220,000 in profit. Um, but it was only one to one. And then we knew we had to change something because we we're going to hit an income ceiling pretty quickly. And so we changed our business model to more passive, semi passive. And that got us to like a million in the second year, which was great. But it then plateaued and it plateaued because I didn't want to take on a team. Like I can see why it happened. I was investing into learning for me, but I only had too much time, so much time. So I was the bottleneck in my business. Once I started realizing that I needed a couple of people to help me out with that, then things started to move. And then again, we plateaued. I'd say the beginning of last year, um, we'd got to the kind of four million a year stage and I wanted to go higher and we were just stuck at this like two years in a row, 4 million or 4.2 million. And I wanted to move upwards. And so we knew that we had to start thinking more horizontally as well as vertically in the things we were selling. You know, we can only sell our stuff to so many people. We'd already done that, like kind of everybody who needed to buy it in the UK anyway had bought it. So we're now going global. And we realized that actually it doesn't have to just be that that we sell. So we looked at the people coming to us. What else do they do? So yeah. one of the things that they, they already do is they write a book. Like most people want to be known as the person in their industry. And so I invested in a publishing company. So I'm part owner in a publishing company so that we can make money from that. I realized that people who I was helping to grow their businesses online then needed staff, but they didn't want to take on employees and they were spending out so much money on freelancers for things like Facebook ads, community management, launch strategy. And so instead I acquired courses in those things, got them accredited with CPD so that we can now offer those courses to people so that they can, you know, get a member of staff for a much lower cost and then put them through our training. And so they have an in-house person that can do those things. So it's about, you know, we've always thought, and we, we haven't seen the results of that yet because that only came out last year and it's going to take some time to see the yeah. results of that. So it's always about thinking of, you know, what's going to happen in the next two to three years rather than what we're doing right now. 
I think that's a really interesting point. So I think a lot of people probably think in quarters, particularly when their business is new, like what's happening this quarter, what's happening this year. And I think it's very natural to create an annual goal. But I think extending your vision further than that is probably a really good way to go. I want to step back to what you said about bringing on a team and getting to a million with pretty much zero team is a feat in and of itself is absolutely amazing. Um, but who were your first hires Do you, in terms of roles? Do you think they were the right first hires? Would you change what team members you would have brought on in terms of the role that they were doing? I think they were right for at the time. So the first hire that I brought on was a tech VA because I was doing a lot of that myself and I don't love it I'm not very good at it it takes me two days what a tech VA does in an hour and so I realized quite quickly that it was actually a real waste of my time to be doing things that somebody else can do quicker than me and you know there's an ego thing based on when you take on a team because you think you're the best person to do everything and you're not at all like my zone of genius is one thing there's another and so a tech VA was the first one. And then we grew very quickly from that to kind of multi-millions in the next year. And so had to, we were going through COVID and it was the perfect time for our company. I'd been telling yeah. people you need passive income for years. And, and they were like, yeah, we'll do that one day. We'll do that one day. And then COVID hit. So everyone's like, okay, we'll do it now. Yeah. And so it worked for us. Um, but it meant that I suddenly needed somebody else to help me manage the operation. So I took on an operations director quite quickly And then um, I didn't really take on any other members of staff for a couple of years. It's only in the last year or so that we've grown to 12 people. And that's just because the business, it's not because the the revenue grew. It's because to get the revenue to grow, I knew I needed those people in place. And I think some people do it the other way around. They wait for the revenue to grow and then they take on the staff. But it's a chicken and egg situation because unless you take on the stuff that you're going to need, like when I'm doing my strategy at the beginning of a year and I'm like, right, next year I want to do this, this, and this, and this will make this much money. If I don't have the people in place to be able to do that, whether it's resources, staff, whether it's knowledge, then I need to get them on first. And that can be scary because you're doing those before seeing the revenue. But I think it's, it is the right way to go. Will I do things differently? Yeah. I mean, I'm a CEO that is a CEO by accident. I wasn't taught how to manage staff or take on staff. And so I've in the past taken on the wrong people sometimes because I've looked for people that are too like me. And now I've learned that actually what I need is the opposite of people like me. I need somebody that, you know, thinks differently, challenges me, all of those kind of things. And I think I have that in place now. Yeah, it's good to have the balanced personality types within the team because they see things differently, they view things differently. And that, although can be frustrating, yeah. <laughs> does does add a really good, valuable element to the team because you can then cover all the bases. And I think yeah. that um, diversification element is really important. But I also think that there's a point at which that makes sense and a point at which that doesn't make sense to me. Like early days, if I'd diversified on day one, it would be not a great idea and i love what you just said about the cpd thing because we're in the process of having um uh, one of our courses cpd accredited and it's pretty much there we just need to change one video because they're really pernickety about certain things they are (laughs) um it's a nightmare but it's nearly there so it's nearly good to go but we're thinking about diversifying in a slightly different way to increase our revenue so we're looking at partnering more with other people with our CPD course um, because it's a no-brainer added value thing for them. So, hey, join us. You also, because a lot of people who are learning to make money in different side hustles through their own business, through passion projects, they end up making money. And then it's a case of, well, what do I do with this money now? And so what we basically do in my business is teach them how to make that money actually work hard for them with a very low time commitment so that's why we're looking at partnering with more people going forward um on that partnerships are brilliant partnerships work like we've used partnerships in affiliates so for instance we do one launch a year that makes around two million or it has the last five times we're hoping that it will this time as well um And we use affiliates to do that. We've never really used Facebook ads until this year, end of last year, um, when we started to use Facebook ads. And we've been able to not put money into advertising because of affiliate partners. That's how that's worked well. So I think that doing things that way and collaborating is a really good way of doing things. 
So how do you develop those collaborations? A lot of people hear that and think, wow, you didn't have to bother with Facebook ads. And I do both. So I do affiliates and partners. I do Facebook ads as well. They both have their stresses. They both have their problems. I think for the the challenge I find with partnerships more so is finding the partnerships and making sure it's a win-win for both parties. Um, so how do you kind of find these affiliates do they, or do they find you? Well, we decided to do it a different way. So I've been part of affiliate launches in the US. So, you know, I'm number one affiliate partner for Selena. So like I've been in that world. And so I saw that in the UK, people were doing affiliate, but they were doing it in the same way, like just getting people with big audiences. And I didn't want to do it that way. I wanted to do it with a real integrity focus. And so what I decided to do instead is use affiliates who had done the program. So some of these people have very little list, you know, maybe 500 to 1,000 people on their list. But yeah. because they've done the program and it's got them results, they are much more likely to bang the drum about how it's worked for them and how it could work for other people. And so we have affiliates doing that for the launch, and it worked massively and in fact we tested it we had one person that was kind of instagram famous with over a million people on their list come on board as an affiliate who hadn't done the program she was beaten by somebody that had 1500 people on their list wow so i think that um being able to talk about your experience of something is much easier to sell something than just sending things out to your list with no real motivation yeah, yeah completely um one of the things that I, with our own students who do really well, that we experience, and I wonder if it's the same for you or if, because it's maybe a different world, it's it's not a tricky thing, but we are teaching people how to make money ultimately through trading financial markets. A lot of people aren't comfortable talking about the profits they're making or the returns that they're making. You are clearly very happy to talk about profits and, and money and revenue, as am I. Other people aren't. So do you find that sometimes a stumbling block? How do you encourage people to shout about their their successes because ultimately it's their success from their work um so how do you encourage people to do that first of all i think that unless we as you know more so for women i think start talking about money and stop having it as a taboo it's always going to be something where there's no equality i find that men find talking about money that they made much easier to talk than women and so i try and do it from the lens of if you don't talk about it there's nobody else there for people to look up to yeah. when i first started my money mindset was awful because <laughs> i was I was so poor growing up and I got bullied for being poor. Um, I got a scholarship to a private school where everybody was rich and I was poor. And so I was the, the bullied kid. And I turned that around to becoming wealthy. And so I always knew when I first started in business, I was looking for someone like me, someone that came from my background, someone that was a woman that came from my background that was earning a lot and I couldn't find anybody. And so I always vowed that if I got to a certain level, I would talk about how much money I'm making so that other people could see what's possible from my background. And that's why I do it. And I teach others to do the same because it has a ripple effect. Yeah. If people realize something can be done, they can then do it. If they yeah. don't see somebody doing it, it's much harder to do it. And so I do it from that point of view. I also do it from the point of view of transparency. Like I believe it's, you know, people talk about how much money they make all the time, but unless they're talking about how it's broken down, yeah. where it comes from, what the profit is, it doesn't really mean very much. And so yeah. I try and always, you know, tell people what profit we made on things. Because, you know, in a two million pound launch, or we had a 2.2 .2 million pound launch last year, we didn't make 2.2 .2 million because we had affiliates. We made 1.6 million. Yeah, in which our is pocket. still an amazing profit margin. It's still good, yeah, yeah. But it's about telling the truth about what that looks yeah. like. Um, and I don't think many people do do that. They talk in, in revenue only. I think revenue is important. People always say, you know, um, revenue doesn't mean anything. It's only the profit that matters. I disagree with that statement because there is no profit without revenue. Revenue has to come first and then you can play with the revenue to gain more profit or, you know, play with the profit. You can't do that if you don't have revenue. Yeah, very, very true. Very, very true. And I think when you have economies of scale at those larger numbers as well, you you have a better profit margin generally. Um, I mean, I was reading uh, 
one of the famous business bits, I can't remember which one it's called, and they were talking about businesses and if after tax and everything, you still have a profit margin of 20%, that's actually pretty good for a business. Really good. And I was yeah, like, and I think oh, okay. Yeah. And then I suddenly went, when I was just me in my business, I was <laughs> way more profitable than that. And now I have team, now I have all these other expenses that go with running and operating the business. I'm like, where's the money gone? So it comes gone? in, I'm like, goodbye, see you later. Yeah. It goes. It's about growth, right? If you want your business to grow, the profit margins have to go down. And that's why people are constantly saying, you know, let's look at the profit margin. How high is it? But actually, there are some years where you are purposely wanting a lower profit margin. We knew that if we wanted to grow, we needed to get the profit margin to around 20, 25 percent. And last year, we tried to do that as much as possible. We were investing, investing, investing to get everything to grow. We didn't get it as low as that, but we tried. You know, yeah. we it was much lower. Yeah. Yeah, completely. And I think I, I love that. And it is about transparency and honesty. And people people hear big numbers and they don't necessarily understand the reality behind what it takes to create those numbers or what actually goes into the bank after those numbers as well. So, yeah, I, I love that. Do you have kind of like a set of values in general for your business then? Yeah, I think values are the most important thing for your business. So our biggest value is that we are risk taking pioneers. We are usually the first to do something or to test something or to try something so that we can teach our audiences. I'm very lucky that with having, you know, so many people that we work with, we see trends very, very quickly. And so we're able to go, OK, well, let's try this then and see if that works and then teach it to people. So risk taking is massive in our business and that goes through everything. So if we have somebody who comes on as an employee, but they are very risk averse, that can cause issues because we're so fast paced, we're fast moving. Yeah. Um, integrity and transparency is massive in our business. There is a million ways to make a million pounds. It doesn't mean you should. Like yeah. that we've seen in the years that I've been in business, I've seen every bad way of making money, every unethical way of making money. And I don't want to be involved in that kind of industry. And so for me, a massive part of what I'm doing is trying to show a ripple effect of change um, somebody said to me really early on, you know, do you like the industry you're in? And I said, no, I'm thinking of leaving it because there are so many charlatans out there. There is so much lying out there. Yeah. Um, I want to leave. And they said, well, you can either leave or you can change it from the inside out. But the only way to make change is to do as well as the people that are doing it in an unethical way so that you can show people there is a different way. And that's yeah. always been my plan. And that's what I do now. I um, absolutely love that absolutely love that because that's exactly the same for me obviously I'm, I'm a trader I've been trading for over 10 years I teach people how to trade and there is so much rubbish like yeah. it's insane um how much rubbish there is out there and we unfortunately often find people who've been affected by the rubbish in a really bad way and then they come to us and then they can become successful the right way the safe way the profitable way but they've got all this baggage because of yeah. what's happened to them before and i hate it absolutely hate it and it's sometimes i'm tempted to walk away as well just being open and real because it does feel like a very uphill battle when you're constantly contending with that and you're being tarred with the same brush from yeah. people who've never met you don't know anything about you and it's like what is going on here like i'm actually genuinely yeah. trying to help you and if you're outing it as well, so I've always been very vocal on the, so for instance, at the moment that you've probably seen all the pyramid schemes out there, there's hundreds yeah. of this new pyramid scheme, high achiever society, whatever it's called, where people are just selling a course to sell the course to sell the course. Um, I talk about it. And when you talk about those things, you get told, you know, you're, you're not helping empowerment, you're putting other women down. And we can't have it both ways. We either no. want ethical way of working or we don't we either want equality or we don't and so i'm still really vocal about talking about those things because when people come into this industry they don't know that those yeah. things aren't aren't real no it's true it's true like there's in my industry there's one particular name who i won't necessarily name just in case of any legal repercussions but the probably one of the biggest people in my space in the uk um and we have people on our mentorship program who were technically mentors for them and you're just like how is that a reality like and when I when I found that out I was like what is going on in that business over there and they're the market leader and we're actually teaching their mentors now like what is going on it makes absolutely no sense to me absolutely no but sense. it's just about 
you know, whether you can sleep at night. There are people that can make, as long as they're making money, they really don't care. There's nothing else about it. They do eventually, I feel, disappear because there are only so many times that you can con people until they talk. So I think long term, I've seen people come into this industry rip people off and and disappear. And that does happen. But by then, so many people have been affected. And that's what I don't like about it. Yeah, completely, completely. So another question for you then. Uh, completely away from business. Actually, maybe not completely away from business, but what is kind of like the, you're successful, you have a business which does great. Um, it's obviously a passion business of yours as well. You, you want to help people and change the world, same as me. So when you're not doing businessy things, what does all of that allow you to do kind of for fun, for passion? What do you love to do? Obviously, you've got twins, which blows my mind. Um, yeah, amazing. So what do you kind of do with your non-businessy time? travel mainly so I love travel I'd always wanted to travel when I was younger and couldn't I was in a school like I said where everybody was rich and they'd come home from their holidays and talk about these amazing places they'd been to and I hadn't been anywhere and so I knew that if I ever made money I would see the world and that's what I'm doing and I'm taking the twins with me you know we've had years where we've been to 15 16 countries where yeah. we just just show them it as soon as much as we can um so I love travel I like the simple things if I'm honest I like cinema film chilling out just doing things with friends and family I still have a a really close group of friends that I had way before this kind of internet fame um before that they're still you know they're still there and and they're the people that keep me grounded they're the people that I know are with me and around me for the right reasons and so I spend a lot of time with them we go on a, a super yacht around Greece every year and we have a right laugh like it's all about being able to share this with the people that I love at the end of the day. So I do a lot with that. Um, I help some charities that I think are really important. Uh, Bullies Out is one of, I'm an ambassador for, you know, being bullied myself when I was younger and being bullied online. Um, When I started this business, I think it's really important that we help other people that are going through those things, things we went through. Um, And Children with Cancer is another uh, charity that's close to my heart. So I do a bit with them. So there is, What it frees me up for, and this is the great thing about passive income, it frees you up for the things you really want to do, and the real passion projects that you want to do. You wouldn't normally have time or money to do. Or the money, exactly. And this is exactly what I say about trading is it's because it's 30 minutes a day once our students know what they're doing, it gives you the capital and it gives you the time to do those things whereas if you're if you're if you decide to set up a business say which is just constant like you have to constantly be there for your business nine to five probably more 40 hours a week probably more um and that is taking all your time you may be making really good money but are you making time freedom and time availability so yeah completely agree completely and it's what that then allows you to do yeah, in the first year of my business, I was doing really well. Like 220000 was more money than I'd ever seen. But I was working 80 hours a week. Exactly. And so yeah. I was like, when am I ever going to spend this money? This doesn't make sense to me. I had to find a different business model to make it work. Because there is no point being very wealthy if your life doesn't feel rich. Yeah. And it's stages, isn't it? So I think we... Ha- sometimes people try to shortcut the journey to being very wealthy and having all the time and I don't think that's how it works I think you have to put in the hard graft at some point and probably at different stages in the business as well so there's definitely times I know in my business I can not take my foot off the gas but I can be a little bit more passive now I've got a team but then I know straight away I can the energy change I'm like I need to be back in now I need to be back involved putting the hard graft in um and you you can feel it I think as a business owner because things aren't quite the way they're meant to be the team aren't necessarily being as I, I notice it when my team aren't being as communicative I'm like okay something's going on here I'm I'm not in the business as much as I should be right now so I have to step back in so yeah I think we definitely go through stages And I think if we're honest, at the beginning of a business, you have to be obsessed with your business to make it work. Like you have to be obsessed with it. And people are very much like, oh, you know, you can just spend an hour a day or whatever. I'm like, yeah, eventually at the beginning, you need to be obsessive, even if it's passive income you're trying to make, because the passiveness doesn't come for a while. You know, you're putting everything into building that asset to be able to make money in the future. Yeah, 
Exactly. Completely agree. So question you may not be able to answer. What is something that nobody knows online or most people don't know about you? That's kind of a surprising thing that people may not know about you. There's not many things because I'm really, really open online. Yeah. Um, so there aren't many things. Not many people know that I won a game show, um, won £28,000 on a game show wow. uh, when I f- was dirt poor and uh, homeless at the time um, that got me kind of started in being able to get my first flat and that kind of thing. And I was the only person to ever win any money on the game show. Wow, so what was that- the game show? It was called Divided. Okay. And it was it was a, an interesting one because it was all about bluff. So at the end of this game show, like we'd answered, there's three of us, we'd answered all these questions. And then at the end, we didn't know what was going to happen. They said, okay, you've amassed 90,000 pounds in the prize pot. One of you is taking home 70%. One is taking 20%. One is taking 10%. And you have to decide between yourselves who takes what. And it goes down by a thousand pounds a second. And every single game show that there'd been up until that point, it had gone to zero because nobody could all agree, agree. on what yeah. taking 70. And I managed to persuade them that I'd get the 70 in a short-ish amount of time. Brilliant. And so I was able to walk away with it. It was it was good fun. And it meant that I could, for the first time, you know, get out of poverty and a poverty mindset to be able to put a deposit down on a flat and that's kind of what got me going absolutely amazing i feel like that's a whole new business model here teach people how to win <laughs> on game shows we can do it we'll get it cpd accredited it'll be amazing yeah. there we go <laughs> brilliant awesome brilliant well thank you so much lisa for your time and um, it's been well, absolutely wonderful talking to you thank you for all the knowledge bombs and wisdom bombs that you've dropped um, i'm sure people get a lot out of it so yes thank you very much for joining us no worries thanks for having me